In this video, how to add HDMI smartphone mirroring to your vehicle. It supports Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, all applications. Navtool is the only company that offers this product. Any Android phone will work in any vehicle with this interface. If your vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay, take advantage of Navtool's product and install it today. This particular demo is being shown in a GMC Yukon. However, any Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, or GMC vehicles will also be compatible with this device. They all have identical screens. The trim panel and the surroundings may look different, but the screens are all identical, therefore this device will work in any of those vehicles. This is a two-part video. Part 1, product demonstration. Part 2, product installation. This is your factory menu here. This menu is run from a computer somewhere in your car. Our device does not affect this menu at all. Our device uses the screen or monitor of the car to display Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or HDMI smartphone mirroring. None of the car's original factory settings or factory menu will be affected in any way. To switch the screen from the factory image, so it's like, think of it as a house TV, right? This is your factory image, this is HDMI 1, right? We want to switch to HDMI 2. So from video input one, right? Let's see the factory image that you see, it's video input one. We wanna to go to video input two. You press and hold in top left corner for a few seconds. And then you get into our menu, which comes from our module that you installed, all right? This module comes, the basic module comes with HDMI input and four camera inputs. If you have a factory rear view camera, it's going to work as before. You can buy optional Apple CarPlay and Android Auto module. However, if your vehicle is equipped with factory Apple CarPlay and Android Auto module, it will work as before and you don't have to purchase it. If your vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can purchase Apple CarPlay and Android module. This is optional. So we have Apple CarPlay or you can connect Android and have Android Auto will show you. So. How do you operate the stuff? So we know that it's working. This is your factory screen. Now we want to switch from factory. We want to switch from the image of the factory screen. So we want to change input. We're going to call it an input. We want to change from seeing a factory stuff to seeing our module. You press and hold the corner for a few seconds and it switches. This shows you that you're currently home button. So this is not a button, this is home position. This is your home screen. If you didn't purchase optional Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, nothing is going to be here, it's going to be grayed out. Keep in mind, if you have factory Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it will work as before. To go back to the factory screen, it's a power button right here. Powers off our interface, switches back to the factory stuff. To go back, you press and hold. Now, settings. You can adjust brightness, reset the interface, and do some adjustments for optional Bluetooth module to control. Reboot device, click yes, device has rebooted. Let's test out factory features. So, this car has a factory camera. Factory camera works as before with all the lines. Now, we added left camera. With the left turn signal, you can see left camera. This particular camera has lines, you can buy camera without lines. If you add a right turn signal camera, again, you got a right turn signal language camera. The camera is not adjusted, we just installed to show you. You got camera with lines, you can buy camera without lines. And you adjust it to view anything to see the blind spot or anything you want. We also added front camera, so in reverse you get rear camera. When you put it in drive, you have front camera. Front camera works up until 10 miles an hour. Once the vehicle reaches speed of 10 miles an hour, front camera automatically turns off and it goes back to the factory screen. So it's gonna go back to red screen. So if you're on a factory screen, everything works as before without a change. And you can use it, you know, if you're using factory navigation, for example, and you're doing left turn signal and you wanna see what's in your blind spot, obviously you adjust the cameras the way you like it, as much view as you want to have, but you'll be able to see left camera. That's on a factory. Now we're going to switch to the interface. 
in the interface you can do right camera so if you're driving you can permanently watch right camera on a screen if you want to watch left camera when you're driving over here press left camera if you want to watch forward camera press forward camera this car is equipped with a factory rear view camera so when you put a rear camera it's blank there is an optional wire that you seen when we did the wiring to connect the factory camera through this interface it is not recommended because you have a factory camera so when you put it in reverse obviously you're going to see a factory camera but you can do that to get out of this menu press anywhere on the screen so if you're just driving and you want to start watching your left camera there you go or you want to start watching your right camera there you go you can switch through all the cameras and you can add rear view camera there's extra wiring may be required to power up the rear camera so that's why it's not recommended if you really want to watch rear view camera we recommend you installing an extra camera it's an option so you can while driving you can watch rear view camera it's going to be an additional camera because the fact that the camera doesn't really make sense as you put the car in reverse you can see most of the camera looks down you can get the camera that has further angle okay those are the factory features HDMI you can connect any HDMI source you can mirror iPhone or Android devices iPhone is recommended to mirror through Apple's own lightning to HDMI adapter however you can also do mirroring of Android device or wireless mirroring device or Apple TV anything that has HDMI you can connect to this we're gonna demo iPhone mirroring but you can mirror any other phone that you like HDMI mirroring it mirrors everything you see on the phone there is no limit everything works Netflix works Hulu works all applications works 100% so whatever you see on the screen you're gonna see you know exact image of that you're gonna see on the car screen so you can do Google Maps Waze YouTube whatever it is you want so let's do a YouTube video let's start a YouTube and over there we have a little video clip it's a commercial and you get to see everything on the screen directly there is no limit it works Netflix Hulu with the only one that do HD mirroring and support all the applications mirroring is pretty much self-explanatory basically what you see on the screen is whatever you see on the phone screen that's what you see over there no lag no delays everything works audio plays through car speakers of course that's it that's mirroring you can connect anything they're just HDMI input same as found in the back of your TV in your house whatever you connect to HDMI cable box PlayStation Apple TV this is HDMI input primarily use is for mirroring to get out of the mirroring screen press anywhere on the screen and it's going to exit out now after we exit out we want to mirror we want to demo Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is identical to the one that is found in your car when it comes factory. There is no difference. It is same Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There are two things to remember about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Number one, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto never have to be updated. All updates happen right here in the phone everything is updated only inside the phone so you never ever ever have to worry about it when the phone is unplugged this is grayed out you see it's gray or when you did not purchase Apple CarPlay or Android Auto when you did purchase Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and plug in either Apple iPhone or Android phone this lights up so you can press it and select anything you want and on the phone it's gonna say either CarPlay or Android Auto CarPlay is always the same in every car in the world. Why? Because everything happens here in the phone. All the updates are in the phone. You never have to worry updating this. We're making this video when it's iOS 11 and it's about to be iOS 12 
with support for Waze, Google Maps, and other third-party apps. This does not have to be updated. Once you update to iOS 12, it will automatically work. In 10 years, it's going to work. In 20 years, it's going to work. As long as Apple maintains it here, this will never have to be updated ever again. Let's do quick demo of Android Auto. Android Auto is same in any car. You never have to worry about Android Auto updates. Android Auto will always work, no matter what. Android Auto is only updated inside the Android phone. You don't have to worry about updating the hardware of this product or anything else. It will always work no matter what. Keep in mind that any Android phone will work and Android Auto looks identical in any car in the world. If you have factory Android Auto, you don't have to purchase the additional Android Auto module. If your vehicle does not come with factory Android Auto, then you can use this Android Auto. You got all the features here. This is the button over here. You press it, return to, gets out to the factory menu. This is to enter it. This is your phone to dial. This is back to your home screen. This is your audio. And this is your maps. And you can select here Waze or Google Maps. So you can select either uh, Google Maps or it's going to load up Waze for you. You can go back to the factory screen or play music or simply get out. All the apps that you can load, you load them directly from the store. So basically you go into the Play Store and you add the apps that you want. It is Android Auto just like found in any other car because Android Auto lives only inside your phone. It does not exist anywhere else. It's full touch screen. You see I can press play and it plays. I can press pause and it pauses. I can open over here, I can close, 100% like original, because keep in mind, Android Auto is only inside your phone, so we look identical in any car in the world that has Android Auto built in. Let's quickly demo Apple CarPlay. Keep in mind, Apple CarPlay only lives inside your phone, so Apple CarPlay is only inside here. You never have to worry about updates. iOS 12 comes out, it's going to work here. Once it's updated here, you never have to worry about updating anything over here. Oh, today and 20 years from now, only updated inside the phone and with always going to work. That's how CarPlay was designed. So only one place updates the phone. How do you control? This is just like original. If your vehicle has built-in Apple CarPlay, you don't have to purchase this. If your vehicle does not have Apple CarPlay, you can take advantage and purchase our CarPlay solution. It's 100% like original. You can swipe or you can press down here, goes to the right, goes to the left. 100% responsive, just like original. Start the app. Over here you got recent apps, maps, tuning radio, phone calls, all your favorite apps. You want to go home, press home. You want to get out press home press return to go out we also have added for you a um, bunch of other um, Siri press and hold and Siri comes out press to go back and again we have a lot of applications whatever app is available in the App Store that supports CarPlay you can add it this is not mirroring this is 100% CarPlay if you go into phone settings you can easily rearrange the applications. We're going to go into the CarPlay. And you see over here, take a look. You see, I want to move maps to the first position. Press and hold. I'm moving the map. Map is in the first position. I want to move map over here. Map is in the corner. Press return to go back to the factory screen. So let's go over the features again. You got HDMI input for any HDMI input. Apple CarPlay, uh, Apple iPhone mirroring, Android mirroring. So you can do YouTube, Waze, Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, anything that you want. Right camera. Again, you can use any right camera that you want and adjust it to any angle you like. Left camera. Front camera. Rear camera. You can use the rear view camera on this menu but we recommend installing another camera we don't recommend using factory rear view camera for this 
Okay, automations, left turn signal, left camera, right turn signal, right camera. In reverse, you get rear view camera, and then drive up to 10 miles an hour, you got front view camera. Now, if you're in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mode, let's say Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, again, camera automations, left turn signal, left camera, right turn signal, right camera. In drive, front camera, in reverse, rear camera, front camera shuts off automatically when you reach the speed of 10 miles an hour. You can get out, if you are in mirroring menu, so we, if you're mirroring a phone, same thing. All of the automations work in any menu, doesn't matter where you're at, so basically if you're in HDMI, we don't have anything connected right now, but if you're in HDMI, again, automations work. If you're just driving and you want to watch your left camera, for example, while you're driving, and then you decided you needed to park, you put in reverse, the factory rear view camera comes on. You put it in drive, the front camera comes on. Keep in mind one thing, if you did not add, add if you did not add any of the cameras, you don't have to worry about it. So, for example, you see with left turn signal, we got left camera. With right turn signal, we got right camera, right? But if you did not add any of the cameras, nothing is going to happen. So if you're in the factory menu and I put left turn signal, you got left camera. If you did not install left camera, left camera will not turn on. In the right hand signal you put, you see right camera. If you did not install right camera, the right camera will not turn on. In the reverse, your factory camera is going to work regardless. Factory camera overrides all other features. In drive, you got front camera. If you did not install front camera, nothing is going to appear. It's going to go back to the screen. So, if you did not install left or right turn signal cameras, left or right turn signal will not change any of those menus. It will just show you the factory screen. If you're in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mode, again, if you're in Android Auto, left turn signal left camera, right turn signal right camera. If you did not install any of the cameras, nothing is going to change. What's in the box? Okay, you will receive an interface. It has main plug, two digital plugs to send HD video image to the screen, all original plugs. HDMI input, USB for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto or Charging, status LEDs, programming port, then you got optional Bluetooth for programming, it's a Bluetooth module, you can program the interface wirelessly or use it if you want to control your smartphone through touchscreen. Installation is very simple, you will receive a main plug like this, this main plug plugs it into the unit just like this you have audio output that connects to car audio system so you can hear audio from your from Apple CarPlay Android auto or mirroring you have four camera inputs you can add up to four cameras and if you're installing Apple CarPlay Android auto you have a microphone input to install a microphone. So four camera inputs, you, you can install extra cameras or don't install any. If you have factory rear view camera, factory camera will work as before without any changes. So you don't have to do anything for factory camera to continue to work. Then you got this cable that's installed at the vehicle's radio module. You got this connector that plugs it together with this. And this connects to the screen module. Then you got a second connector. We're going to show you all in details. That connects to the radio module. It has a single lead that also on this same harness. You got a single connector for this. So this has a long wire over here. You see that long wire? So you can install this at the radio module and route the long wire to the screen module and connect them together like this because this cable connects to the screen module and then connects to the main interface harness and then you got two digital cables you on they plug in over here into the module and this plugs in into the screen module and the factory cable from the screen module plugs in here
Okay? So, one more time. Very simple and easy installation. This cable plugs into the 16 pin harness at the screen module and it has two connectors at the end. You take the interface's main harness that is 100% plug and play. If you're not adding any cameras, you don't have to do anything, and you plug them together. So the screen module plugs into the interface main harness. The interface's main harness plugs in into the module like this. Then you got another harness that plugs in at the radio module. We're going to show you all the locations. It has that long wire with a single wire at the end with a four pin connector. And that plugs in together here to the connector that connects into the screen module. And then you got these two digital cables that plug into the module. And they plug in. This plugs in into the screen module, and the factory cable from the screen module plugs in, in here. This interface is installed at the screen module. There's plenty of space in any Buick, Chevrolet, GMC, or Cadillac to install this. So all of this is installed at the screen module, except this cable with a single pin is installed at the radio module and it comes with a very long cable. You're going to open this zip tie and you're going to have very long cable so you can route this to any location you like. We're going to show you exactly how it's installed step by step. This is just a short preview. Do not forget to program the interface. All interfaces are stripped blank as they need to be configured by the installer or end user. Programming process will take less than one minute and can be performed using Windows or Mac computer. How to update the software? It doesn't matter what you're updating, whether you're updating camera interface, video in motion interface, wireless mirroring interface, or Apple CarPlay interface. The process of update is identical. Updater works on Mac and Windows based PC, so we have for both Windows and Mac. To update, you need a cable like this, it's a standard cable. One end of the cable is micro USB and the other is a standard USB. This goes into the computer and the micro USB goes into the interface. Connect this end into the computer, Mac or Windows. Connect the other end into your interface you're updating. Again, any interface. Once the interface is connected, everything information is going to appear on the screen and install desired software. Just for the test purposes, we're going to show you how to update it with uh, Cadillac CTS software, Video in Motion. And hit install. So now it's installing and shows you progress bar and a percentage. So it takes only seconds to update it. So you download the updater from the website for Mac or Windows that's gonna take you approximately 60 seconds and then the update process takes only another minute or so. This is how to update the interface. So we're showing you the update process and the entire process only takes less than a minute. Okay, the update process is done and it's 99%. It says do not disconnect. In about a second, it's going to tell you that it's complete and you can disconnect the interface. There you go. Device settings updated and you're done. So entire update process takes only about two minutes. You download software from the website for Mac on Windows, about a minute, and update takes another minute. And all you need is a cable like this. So USB cable to micro USB. Vehicle disassembly. This panel comes out very easy. You open the armrest. Over here, 
you got this panel that comes out so you simply open it with a plastic tool like this just to release this panel now that you release this panel this panel from the back just pull it up and it's going to come out it's just clips they're metal clips so you can remove this panel as many times as you want so just give it a pull and it comes out the radio module is located up here you can access the connectors you see there's nothing there we're gonna show you what's behind there in this particular car it's easy to access radio module you open the glove box you drop it down don't forget to remove the release so you got on this side you got this release over here let me show it to you the release you gotta remove it I'll show it to you in a second once you open the glove box, behind the glove box you'll find the panel that comes out. I'm going to show you this panel is very easy. You got screws one, two, three, four, five, and over here on the side you got a six screw. So you're going to remove those screws so this is just the cover panel that comes out. And then you're going to go and you're going to find the mud sitting behind this metal bar. So you see the metal bar over here behind the glove box. And the mud is sitting right there behind see right there you see this blue plug that's the module you need right there it's sitting behind the metal bar in this car so you open the glove box you'll see the metal bar not in front but behind towards the engine bay and the, you need the blue plug and you need the 16 pin gray plug all right these are the two plugs that you need so we're gonna unplug them and access them we're gonna show you so this is right there you see green blue this is the module that you need right there interface installation this module right here is the radio module you need that second connector that green connector the big large green connector in some radios it's not even there the gray one is the one that you need that is the connector that you need for all your installations this one right here so that's what we're going to be working with you're going to see in the next slide you're going to see the picture of the radio module and it's identical in every car now that you have unplugged this wire you take the supplied one so that's your radio module you just seen the picture of the radio module that is your radio module this is where you're going to plug in this cable that we gave you. So you're going to plug in the supplied cable as follows. We're going to go ahead and plug in this. You plug in what you unplugged previously from. And then you're going to plug in this back into the radio module. Okay, and now you have the single long wire because your radio module can be located anywhere in the car, right? So you have left with the single module and this particular car we need to run it from the back all the way to the glove box, alright? But we're just doing the testing so before we want to close the car up, we want to test that everything works. We have an opening behind here to go directly into the glove box. So you're not going to have any problems of sending this cable directly behind the glove box. But that's your entire installation. It's all plug and play and you have the plug and play connector in the back. Now we need to go behind the glove box and find the screen module. In this car it's behind the glove box. In some cars radio module and the screen modules are together. It depends, but they usually close by. In some cars, you can have a screen module in the front, a radio module in the trunk, but that's just a couple of cars, uh, like Cadillac CT6 and similar. Uh, all Chevys have it pretty much in the front. All Chevy Silverados have it right here in the front. Uh, Chevy trucks, pickup trucks, basically in the front. Uh, SUVs have it one here, one behind the glove box. So now we're going to go look at the radio module. Go ahead and unplug the blue cable. 
behind the at, at the screen module take this cable plug it into the blue cable that you unplug take this cable plug this and back into the screen module okay so when I have two ends you're gonna take the module and you're gonna plug those ends in before we do that we also have this cable this cable right here you're going to unplug the black cable you're gonna plug the black cable in here and you're gonna plug this end back into the screen module okay we got two cables and we got two ends over here the single wire that you ran from the other side you're gonna plug in here together you're going to take you got one end left you take the main harness that plugs into the box it has all, all the RCH if you're adding extra cameras and you're gonna plug it in here it's like a puzzle it all connects together you can't go wrong because all connectors are different it's hard to miss okay now we have plugged in everything together all we got left are your three ends and they're all different take your interface plug in the main harness your installation is done that's it it takes a couple of minutes to install the whole interface you can plug in your mirroring or anything else into this module and you're ready to go whether it's CarPlay, Android Auto or mirroring or cameras your installation is done it's 100% plug and play after you finish the installation and you test everything reassemble the vehicle and enjoy the product thank you for watching please click the link on the left to subscribe to the channel or click the link on the right to watch the full video.